Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Croc 2. Welcome to the Caveman Village. It's strange how we're going backwards in time. And also backwards in terms of, I don't know, intelligence? Oh, hi King! Ginger Soda Day? Well, the other gobo was mentioning a mechanic, now you're ma mentioning a mysterious guy. Hmm. But here is our little side quest for this village. We have to gather the ingredients in order to make ginger soda ourselves. Do you remember what the ingredients were? Well, if you don't... Yeah, I know about Swap Me Pete. If you don't, well, you can always go and talk to the Cossack Gobo King again, because he does list off the ingredients that we need in order to make ginger soda. These are levels that I don't want to deal with. Right now, I want to deal with some really scary looking lava, like that is a really deep red hot, it looks hot. I'm just gonna say that, it does. So we're looking for four things in terms of making ginger soda. What could that be, you might ask? Well, we're sure to come along eventually. Oh, here we go. A box of sugary goodness. That's one of the things that we need. And it, it does have geometry, because I ran into this stupid thing. This, I can't open? Because, well, I haven't done anything in this place. And also, there's the Golden Gobo door. We'll be back there a lot later. It's strange that nothing actually is going along around the bonfire. But yeah, in terms of Caveman Village, it's kind of an interesting place. It's just kind of weird thematic-wise. Because... I kind of think in my mind that the Gobo tribes of this game are slightly more, like, more intelligent than the Gobos of the last game, because they're a little bit more civilized, they have a theme of their own, like, that kind of thing. Ooh, a box of fizz. Pop, pop. Cool. Whoa, what is this place? Gold Rock! Ah. Oil and spares, Gobo F1. My bets are right, this is a kind of racetrack. Yeah, we do have a Gobo mechanic. Okay. So even though they are caveman Gobos, they. What is going on with my jumping here? Ugh. That's ugly looking. Okay. Not allowed to go up there. They know, they know mechanics, so they're pretty much like Flintstones level of knowing stuff. This door also doesn't open. So we got two of the things, but we're missing two others. Specifically, ginger root, because we kind of need that in order to make ginger soda at all. And going into the out-of-bounds area of the level is not going to help us. Maybe this tree will. 
give us a good outlook of our situation. Which seems like a silly idea. Hmm. Oh, mighty Stonehenge, what could you bring for me? Ooh, there we go. I can't get up on these rocks. There we go. Oh, there is another passage all the way down here. Let's take a look. That's another thing about this village, is that, well... It seems to be kind of the biggest, so far. But it also has really small areas and passageways in order to make it to the rest. I don't know about you, but this looks the most ginger thing around here. So let's pick it up. And now, what else do we need? Well, um, we need a witch doctor. That's actually a really cool mask. I like it. Hey, dude. So it is almost ready. Oh no, I need something, um... What was the other thing? I need, think I need something to put it in. Let's grab a bucket. Yeah. Now we're able to actually put everything in, so... We should be able to make ginger soda now. Apparently the witch doctor is not going to help us, so we have to go back to the king. King! I have all your ingredients, I don't know what to do with them myself. I'm not a gobo, I'm just your savior, your god. You're supposed to throw to me. Silly me, you do have to go to the cauldron in order to make it. Just go really close to it. I'm a dumb. I made ginger soda, or I made rainbow come out of it. Sweet. There we go, it's all fizzing. It's fizzing and popping and something I probably... Yeah, I, w I wouldn't drink it. Nah. I'm, I'm fine. I'm fine. Do you have water? Iced tea? I don't know. Now you go back to the king and apparently the ginger soda got all the way to over to him. But we get another hundred crystals for our card, so we have lots lots of stuff. And with that, the side quest is done, so now we can go ahead and tackle the levels. So you might be thinking to yourself, what exactly do you think is seriously, well, the special level in this world? Well, I think it's the one that is the most outfitted for awesome. Come on, look at that. They must have carved that arch. Pretty sweet. It's time for a race. Not by boat this time. It's time to get us some sweet wheels. Or help find the wheels, I guess. Huh. Well, this is certainly a different development. In fact, with this world, you can't do the special level f first or really at all before you do some of the other levels. Which is an interesting thing to do, that you have to find other things in other levels in order to do, well, an additional level. Outright, even. So that means we're going to be needing some items. Or pushing on a door. Thanks, Proc. Proc, go into the... Thank you. <laughs> So here's the interesting thing why I'm showing this shop scene. This is going to be the first instance where we're going to be needing more of the same item. We're actually going to be needing two blue gummy savers, two candy crazes. Which means, yes, you can stack items. You can have more than one at one time. This is another thing that is not explicitly stated to you at all. But, yeah, you can have more than one if you really want. Which means that you, if you have a stockpile and you are just wanting to outfit yourself for the rest of the levels in the game, you can do so. Technically, I'm not going to. I'm just going to be getting them for each level that I see fit to. So, for our next level... 
we need two blue candy craze gummy savers, and we need our clockwork gobo. Is he an odd guy? Oh. Judging gobos. Weird people. So, we're looking for some missing car wheels. Where could they be? Maybe these guys will help us out. And you didn't stop them? Well, I think we lost the race already because you're not going after them and taking any initiative. What about you, guy? I, I could come closer, you don't need to yell. So, apparently, they ran into the jungle, and they ran into the mine. Well, for our first adventure, with our two gummy savers, we're going to be going into the jungle first. Find the wheels in the jungle. Or as I like to call it, welcome to world three. We've got some caveman dantinis, I guess, because it is the caveman village, but it also has some nice design with just giant footprints everywhere. But in terms of saying welcome to world 3, this is really where the game just starts to get hard. Anyway, enough with listening to just, like, the solemn music, because in any case, with the difficulty of this level that it actually presents to you, the music doesn't really do it justice, but it's kind of nice just to keep you a little bit calm. It's when you get into this cave that things get a little bit interesting. By interesting, I'm meaning that um, your jumps are going to be a little bit, well, more annoying than they used to be. For instance, I'm going to do a triple jump to get all the way up here. I find this to be more reliable than simply jumping to the bottom area, and it's also the quickest way of getting up here and getting all the gem crystals. Ow. Okay. First one! Haha. <laughs> uh, took two worlds, but finally I get to hit myself. On top of that, you can just drop down here onto these monkey bars, because they are monkey bars. I, the, the word escapes me. It's like I'm not a kid anymore. And get the key. The key is going to be useful outside of this cave, but there's still more to it that we need to do. And that involves getting to that platform over there. Now, if your depth perception is not really that great, I'm just going to tell you now that a normal jump is not going to cut it. This is going to be the first instance of you actually having to use the long jump. And let me just say, the long jump is not really reliable. Because in terms of the game, this is the first instance that you're going to be using the long jump, so you're probably not familiar of how it works. And because of that, you're going to be starting at the beginning of the level a lot. But the thing with the long jump is that it has a longer execution time than the other moves in Croc's repertoire. And I... Wow, I'm an idiot! Okay, good. <laughs> nope, that did not work. Sometimes I'm able to run away from them. But the thing that sets the long jump apart from the rest of Croc's moves is that he does a little tiny baby jump before he does the move. And that always trips me up. I'm always just way too early. I always have to slink all the way in order to just kind of comfortably do that. Plus, you always also have to be, well, align, aligned properly with the platform that you're trying to reach because you cannot change your trajectory mid-jump going to commit to whatever angle you have. And there's also this part. Platforming challenges in World 3 are kind
kind of annoying, especially with, like, camera issues. But the only reason we're coming all the way over here is to get the colored crystal, and also to do Clockwork Gobo section. This one's in an interesting spot, because as you can see right back there, there's actually more to this little area. It's not accessible by the Clockwork Gobo, which means that we're actually going to be coming here a little bit later in the level. Down you go! Oh, or not. Okay. You saved yourself. Fine by me. Camera doesn't really help you with these two jumps right there. Now all we have to do is backtrack out of this cave and we'll be good to go. Except that also means that we're going to be having to do another long jump. So just be prepared for that. I'm not. Good. I was wondering if that was going to work. Now, this jump I'm never sure of the distance, but a long jump, like, if you're able to do it correctly, you should be good to go. I'm always too early is the problem with me. But with that key, now we can get into this door. And we can get into this little area, which is pretty much just like a giant canyon with one long bridge on the other side of it. It's kind of a cool piece with how simplistic it is, just because of like the setting and whatnot. But with that, we get our first wheel. And yes, that is what the wheels look like. Also get on top of here. It's important to know that you can get on top of these rocks here, the Stonehenge-like rocks. It's important for a little bit later. But for now, we're just going to be taking our time and taking a nice stroll over some lava, no big deal. And seeing what this other big room has for us. Did I mention that these rooms are pretty big now? They didn't have... I don't think they actually had to do any sort of... Uh, scaling in terms of croc size in order to actually make it work. Now as you can see, it's up on this little platform here that you can see those monkey bars over there. That's actually the Clockwork Gobo section. So there's really not much else we can do over here. We can't get over there no matter how good my long jump could be. So head over here. Now let's get our surroundings correctly. There's a box down there I want. And a balloon over there. That'll bring me back up. You said a little bit more enthused, but I can too, but the problem is, is that World 3... Well, if I remember correctly, World 3 is where that one guy that I mentioned before I even started this, smashed his disc. So, eh, this, this is kind of a fantastic place for just kind of making you really angry and not that fun. In order to reach the monkey bars up top there, you have to use a triple jump. It's just kind of odd, to be honest, that you have to use the moves that are really just like, kind of exclusive, and now they're expecting you to use them. But you don't know you need to use them until you go, Hey! Oh, I need to use that. And naturally, you're probably going to get punished for it. Now we're up above here. We just did a huge U-turn. Now we're above. There's another key locked door over there. There is bunch of crystals up here that we are able to collect. It's never good that we're up to eight instead of like a set five or ten. We can't do much else. Let's just head outside. I believe this is the only checkpoint gong as well in this level, so checkpoints are also really scarce. 
So if you're doing poorly, um, the level is not gonna be nice to you. It does have some good size pieces, though, like the skeleton here. Now, listen carefully, because this actually is a remix. As I get surprise attacked. It's rather subtle, but it is a remix of the main croc theme, which is kind of cool. And it wouldn't be cavemen without dinosaurs. We're kind of in a Flintstones world here. But, seeing as they are herbivores, shouldn't have too much trouble. They don't want to eat croc meat. The heads are also not... The brontosaurus heads are also not in sync, so... Uh, you're gonna have some fun trying to figure out where they are going to be. I believe this one moves quicker than the one on the right. Yeah, it does. Or the other way around. Either way, they're out of sync, so uh, you're gonna have some you're gonna have some fun. Especially when they don't want to play nice. Man. Come on. Nope. Okay, instead I'm going to actually be waiting patiently now in order to get onto that other Brontosaurus head, so I'll... I'll meet you when I'm actually on that head. Alright, there we go. I actually had a little bit of an issue. Um, the first head actually didn't want to move for a little bit, but we don't have to worry about these heads anymore because now we have some platforms to safely get across. And as you can see right over here, we have some dinosaurs to deal with. These are rather unique enemies. In the fact that you don't actually have to fight them if you are good at getting out of their range of sight. I'm gonna fight them anyway. Which might not be a good idea. No! Oh. Okay, I'll meet you back there and we'll talk more about dinosaurs! That'll be fun. Okay, so here's the thing about dinosaurs. They actually take two hits to kill. They also come after you at frightening speed. The first one stuns the dinosaur, the second one kills it. So what killed the dinosaurs? Um, well, I guess you're a descendant. We killed our ancestors. Pray for us. There's a little, little caveman dandini all the way over here, but on the other side of this big huge stone formation, we get our next key. We're going to have to use all the way back. But before we do anything of the sort, remember what I said about getting up on the top of these Stonehenge-like rocks. Yeah, the rest of our crystals, our normal crystals anyway, are on top of this area. It's going to take a little bit, of course, in order to actually collect them all, but they're here for you to collect, so feel free to do that at your own leisure. I don't think there was actually any realistic reason about using like Stonehenge rock formations like this in Croc 2, like there wasn't any significance behind it, but well. And now we have four out of the five of the color crystals, so we're pretty much close to actually finishing this level. It is long. It's even longer in the fact that you're going to be pretty much doing specific areas a lot, probably continuing a lot, because you're going to be using moves that are kind of unfamiliar to you. This checkpoint just to be safe, and then we just need to do a quick jaunt over to the other door here. And pretty much the exact same room as the last wheel that we collected, we get our second wheel. Excellent. But, before we do anything, 
Hey, hidden away. Up top here is our last colored crystal. Of course, the portal's always nearby. This section is actually rather easy, to be honest. All it is is going around on these monkey bars, dodging swinging fireballs. Sometimes they're going to be going, like, horizontally around, sometimes just, like, along the track, other times diagonally. But you just simply have to dodge them. There's really just nothing to it. And there we go! Because now, as you can see, there was that bar door over there. We just went through it, so we're pretty much done with this level. Which is good. First time I played this, I'm like, okay, I need to get out of here because I'm a little bit exhausted. But yeah, that is pretty much your opening to World 3. We also start in a different way because we're just like in the passageway of the door. Thanks. Croc's at the point where he's not even gonna say no problem. He's like, yeah, yeah, I did it, okay. Big deal. So now we've collected two of the wheels for our awesome racing car. The other two are gonna be in the mine. And this is gonna be the next instance of what World 3 does in terms of enhancing the difficulty. How so? Well, you'll see that next time. I just want to race. That's all I want to do. That's what I wanted to do in the first place, but no, we have to do this first. But don't worry, we'll get to the race next time as well. But first, some mines. See you next time, everyone.